welcome to June 9th. And today we're taking a look at a battle from the Vietnamese conflict over on guncalendars.com. And I'll take a moment to say thanks to Patriot in the Dark who brought this one to my attention. Posted an article over here on Gun Channels about it this morning. I started to look around on the internet and it's an infinitely fascinating uh, thing, a uh, recounting to, uh, to research. Uh, so if it's something that if you're interested in history from lots of different angles you might be interested in this one. So as I mentioned it's a battle from the early days of the Vietnamese conflict, uh, the Battle of Dong Zui. I'm probably butchering the name. Uh, it was um, a remote town uh, with a special forces camp nearby. Uh, the Viet Cong had destroyed the road going to it so it's only way to uh, access it was with a uh, airstrip. So uh, one of the facets to the story or the recounting is the, um, I guess, debate or the 2020 hindsight now on to whether or not it was strategically necessary to be at that camp at that time. Uh, I guess they had been doing some strategy as far as hopping from camp to camp. And for whatever reason, it was determined that the Green Brace needed to go back there and take the camp. Um, and as part of that, they brought some CBs to rebuild the landing strip. Now another facet of this is the build-up or the um, preparation by the Viet Cong uh, for this particular battle. Unbeknownst to the U.S., I suppose the uh, VC had brought more munitions and uh, preparations to this one than ever anything up to this point at least. It's not maybe not the biggest battle ever, but it was the biggest to this point. This was still early on in the conflict. And I guess there is some, uh, again, debate as to whether or not this could have been uh, the first uh, real uh, action between the United States and the North uh, Vietnam. But as it was, uh, while the, Viet the U.S. certainly was involved, this was um, an attack on the North Vietnamese against the South Vietnamese in that town. So uh, as I was, again, reading some of the recounts of the, the battle, uh, they come from the CBs. Uh, there were CBs there, and um, there's some from the Army and the Green Berets and the others that came in after, uh, but also from the uh, Army uh, helicopters. And this, I guess, was uh, at relatively uh, early on as far as the armament of helicopters. So some of the uh, techniques and uh, methods of using the, the various munitions on a helicopter were still being developed and were help test it since this was such an intense uh, air to ground battle. Uh, there was also some involvement with the Air Force. In fact, they lost a pilot in this one as well. So this all started on June 9th. That's why we're talking about it today, but it happened at 11.30 p.m. So it really took place on June 10th. Uh, as I mentioned, there were 11 Green Berets and nine Seabees at the camp outside of the town. And the North Vietnamese came in with full force 400 mortar rounds was their first attack. That killed two of the Green Berets and wounded almost everybody. Uh, they were able to hold off the first literal waves of attack. We're talking 1,500, uh, two full uh, regiments, well not full, two 750 soldier regiments of North Vietnamese. We had 11 Green Berets, nine CBs on the ground some advisors and then basically one battalion, about 400, uh, 400 plus uh, Cambodians and South Vietnamese uh, that were um, defending the town and the, uh, there was people there, the civilians there. Uh, so the North Vietnamese came in, uh, killed a couple of, of the Green Berets right at the beginning. Uh, the fighting lasted until at 2.30 a.m. The guys were all uh, kind of forced back into one building. Uh, they defended themselves. The uh, helicopters were uh, in, in, in uh, intimate uh, contact with the guys on the ground, uh, defending their positions and uh, fighting and ultimately so many acts of valor getting guys up off the ground with rescue attempts and a uh, few helicopters were lost, crewmen were lost, One, uh, the Air Force was doing bombing runs. And uh, just again, if you're interested in the aircraft part of this, if you're interested in the overall strategy of the war, if you're interested in any of these specific units, uh, the Seabees, you know, the Navy is also the, one of the Seabees who was awarded the uh, Medal of Honor uh, for his heroic acts at this, uh, this evening. So this was a, an infinitely interesting uh, 
uh, recount to hear from, you're going to hear, uh, go online and find things, for, and we'll have links in here uh, to, to help get you started, but I'm, just, I'm uh, hoping that people will find even more. Uh, these are people that might still be alive, uh, the survivors and the people that were involved, uh, people that have uh, recollection of all this still, so I uh, encourage you to go out and find it from the Navy, from the Air Force, from the Army Air, and the Army Ground. Uh, not to mention there's probably some Vietnamese and Cambodian uh, in, in experience still out there. So I think this is uh, something that's uh, really interesting thanks to Patriot in the Dark for uh, posting it. Um, I'm going to continue to look into it here for a bit but I did want to post some things over on guncalendars.com to keep it in our archive and then post a video here to let people know about it. If you know anything, uh, maybe a movie uh, or some uh, you know, like a Tales of the Gun or something that might have gone into uh, this particular battle, please let us know in the comments or over on Gun Channels. And thanks everyone for your involvement in keeping our Second Amendment history alive. As always, thanks for watching.